Hello and welcome to the Ray Show Podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Ray, and today on the show we have a very, very special guest. We have King Diamond of Merciful Fate, and it just feels so good to say those words. Um, so we'll be getting to that chat here in just a little bit. Super appropriate month with uh, Merciful Fate out on the road again with just about the coolest badass show you can see. And they'll be playing in Atlanta on November 16th, so make sure you get your tickets for that at the Tabernacle. Also on the bill that night will be the Mighty Creator and uh, Midnight. So it is a, a killer night out of metal capped off by this this amazing show you're going to hear about here with King in just a few minutes. But first, I really want to thank everyone that came out to the live show and tuned in online. It was amazing, the response. I, I can't tell you how much our blackened hearts appreciate all the love and support that night. Um, we will be announcing the next one here in the next week for November. We've got a killer guest, killer comic. So make sure to come down to Cine Athens and uh, come to a live ratio podcast taping. And as always, you can see that episode and any of the followers, any of the following episodes we're going to shoot on our YouTube channel. Just just type in the ratio podcast and that should bring you up to where you need to be. Um, but tonight I want to give a little context on the absolute just legend that we have on the show. Um, I've been listening to King Diamond since I was probably about 10 years old. So that's that's the majority of my life I've been listening to Merciful Fate and then later his solo work in King Diamond. And there's really no way to give context, especially to, to younger folk, on how earth-shattering, like, just controversial and wild Merciful Fate was when they came out, and still are. I feel like those albums, especially, you know, that's always Don't Break the Oath and Melissa are cited. They have an amazing catalog after that as well that you should definitely check out and go down that rabbit hole. But those two records in particular just 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 placed a new standard on like just a, a, a dark metal record. And I ate it alive. I mean, King Diamond was very controversial. You know, it was like Alice Cooper funneled through a more sinister, wicked light. And it was it was just beautiful. He talked about Satanism and Anton LaVey and other cool shit in his interviews and it just really freaked out my 11-year-old brain and scalded it in the best way. Um, but King was always such a, a good ambassador for metal and for his music and his passions and his interests. And you're going to hear that tonight on, on, in this interview. So uh, it is such a pleasure to be able to introduce King Diamond. All right, Johnny Ray with the Ray Show podcast, and I'm telling you, this I must be living right because I have one of my absolute heroes on the line here today, Mr. King Diamond of the Mighty Merciful Fate. How are you doing, sir? Doing very good. How are you? Oh, man, great. Great to be talking to you, man. And, and you know, let's just come right out of the gate. It's so nice to, to see merciful fate having such a fucking summer that they had man please tell me your impressions of this triumphant return to the stage that you guys had with all the festivals and now with the fall tour it's been awesome i mean it's really uh, uh reliving a lot of old feelings you know uh but uh in the dressed differently you can say you know uh it's uh it's really like Merciful Fate should have been uh, experienced in the early days, you know, because uh, it, it, it looks right too now. So it's, um, but that's, that's a matter of, of uh, stars standing uh, uh, aligned correctly and all this stuff, you know. I mean, people have asked for a while whether we were going to play more uh, live stuff in Merciful Fate and all this, you know, for many years or do more albums and all. But the uh, same answer has always been there. I never say never. Uh, if if the stars align properly, we uh, can probably do it, you know, uh, and and want to do it. But it's uh, and and by that I mean uh, not going out and just uh, bring a backdrop and then uh, play some shows and make some money and then that was it. That's not what Merciful Fate is about, you know. It's uh, that would not be good for Merciful Fate's name. I don't think so. That's not the right way to do it. It has to be all out, you know, or nothing. And uh, this is exactly that. So uh, with with 
5B management coming into the picture, you know, for the first time in our career a couple of years ago, and then suddenly COVID started, right? So it put a put a delay on everything. But uh, now it's happening, and uh, it's awesome. I mean, the the show production is awesome. Uh, everybody plays fantastic. It's uh, so cool to write new stuff again with with Hank, you know, uh, doing the same, uh, using the same formula as as back uh, when we did uh, Don't Break the Oath, uh, and it 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 works still. You know, it's uh, it's. Uh, Real pleasure and a lot of fun, and uh, see a lot of happy faces too. You know, it's really cool. Uh, audiences, uh, many generations. You know, not just uh, one generation. It's it's really cool to see a lot of young people as well. You know, that uh, singing along with, with lyrics that were written way before they were born. You know, right. so it, it's it's really a good experience. Yeah, I, I I caught you guys in Las Vegas, and the stage set is just amazing. It's just unbelievable. And you're also donning a, a new badass costume. So tell me about the crown and the robe you've been rocking. I mean, it's just so badass. Yeah, there was a. I mean, the, the thing about trying to to do some changes uh, of the 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 outfit, you know, was uh, God, man, that's something I wanted to do a million years uh, ago. Uh, inspired by. Uh, Genesis and with Peter Gable back in, I saw them in 75, uh, spring of 75. They had started at tour in 74 in, in the US, you know, uh, and they were playing in Copenhagen there early 75. And I saw this show with Peter Gabriel wearing the mask or a head of a fox, you know, and uh, all kinds of different stuff. And he, he would uh, be very, very theatrical in, in his performance, the whole band, I would say, but mainly him. And uh, huge inspiration. And, and same year uh, in the autumn, uh, I saw his Cooper with Welcome to My Nightmare. Another big inspiration, you know, to, to see how uh, uh, that was presented. And um, I mean, now here with, with the different uh, uh, outfits, I, I'd seen some stuff done by, by uh, a girl called Missy uh, out in Los Angeles uh, and uh, saw the portfolio and stuff like that and I was she's actually also been working with uh, Slipknot to a degree I think um, but uh, the stuff she had I, I, I saw it uh, modified uh, for my purpose you know and so uh, the Rams had this pretty much a whole head you put on uh, and uh, I can tell you I can't wear it longer than that one and a half song that I do because it gets so hot that when I take it off, you can almost see steam come out of my head. Oh my uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really the way it, it closes up, you know, uh, and it's hard to see through this. It's, it's actually a chance walking up and down the stairs, but it's it's cool, you know, it absolutely works. Um, and uh, then the crown uh, was something I saw that she modified for me, you know. I saw she had one, uh, but I wanted it different. And then uh, she did exactly what I was after and it worked a hundred percent with the makeup that I used last time with King Diamond actually and that makeup is something that was used earlier with Merciful Fate like maybe yeah, many years ago you know uh, it was one of the last ones I used to to uh, with Merciful Fate actually when we were probably in, I think 90, uh, 1999 uh, when we last toured with Merciful Fate was probably that one that I was wearing there uh, so that's the continuation, but with the outfit and, and the, the the crown and the stuff, that it it has a whole different look, you know. And uh, the coats, uh, Missy actually, uh, that's what she told me, you know, uh, was I think it was a museum that she actually was in, uh, and she got them to open up one of the monsters where they had uh, old clothing, bishops' clothing, and she was allowed to with gloves on, of course, uh, to copy the pattern of this. Uh, uh, old uh, bishop's jacket from the 17th century and uh, then she made those for me based on those patterns you know so it's uh, it is very uh, original you can say even though it's copies but uh, and they look the part too you know and so it's, it's, it's really cool to get this stuff and, and, and that it works Oh, yeah. We tried some extra things that that didn't all it didn't all work, you know. But uh, what we had there in Las Vegas, stuff. But see, Las Vegas, the the production was not finished. It will finally be finished when we start this tour. Uh, there's been so much uh, delay and, and and hardships, you know, with, with COVID to, to try and go on a tour. It's it's in, incredibly hard to just find buses and trucks and, and drivers that can drive, you know, the the buses and trucks. You know, it's a uh, 
finding crew and all this stuff. You know, it's uh, we have a great uh, core crew, but there was a couple of spots where we needed some some new people. You know, and uh, some made it to the next part here, some didn't. You know, but it's it, it's really hard to to uh, to find all these things. And, and those who built productions, uh, those companies are being totally overrun right now, and they might not have the same amount of people working there any longer. So it gets really hard, and materials are hard to get. That was the thing uh, for right now here. Uh, when we went out uh, in Europe and uh, ended up in Las Vegas, you know, uh, we could not get the last parts finished. Right. Uh, and it has just been finished now. Uh, I saw pictures of it two days ago, and it looks absolutely amazing. It's, it's something that goes up on the second floor, on, this, on the second uh, part upstairs, you know, uh, that will complete it now, finally. So uh, what you're going to see is actually more than our festival production in Europe. It's uh, it's even bigger than that, that we are going to uh, notch into the theaters, you know, and just make, make it fit in there. Um, but it's going to be fantastic. I mean, when that last, uh, these last two things, these two Gothic arches uh, on each side upstairs, you know, of the altar, it's going to look fantastic, you know. And uh, so that's, that's a... a uh, uh, development all the way, and the cross you saw in uh, in Las Vegas didn't get the right, uh, let's say, expression that it needed to have because it was not able to be placed right above the altar where it should be. It was placed all the way in the back, on uh, bolted up on a, a lighting uh, bridge back there because there was it was not high enough uh, to the ceiling for it to hang uh, from from one of those that it normally would hang from. Uh, so we had to be I mean, so it looked much smaller than it really is so uh, right. but for for uh, the tour here it should be in place uh, and, and everything should look uh, perfect well well, the tour is just amazing I mean not only do you get you know this celebration of Merciful Fate but you guys also have Creator and Midnight rounding out oh, the yeah. lineup um, you know, you guys are uh, coming through Atlanta on November 16th on this run. Uh, do you have any recollections of the first time you visited Atlanta or played Atlanta? Man, it's been a long time. We played the, the, the Tabernacle several times. I mean, so it's uh, very good memories from there. Right, right. Well, um, you know, we're celebrating, you know, this at this point, you know, Merciful Fate has so many quality full links. And when you go through the fan base, you know, everybody likes Don't Break the Oath of Melissa. And then, you know, you have people that have other favorites from other records that, that grew up in different areas, eras. Yeah, yeah. You know, how hard is it to, to, to get a set list together and build this this show? Well, this one was decided a long time ago. Uh, the set list, you know, uh, that will be more merciful fate. Uh, that's the plan, anyway. Um, the the set list here has been uh, right from from when Timmy joined again uh, the band, you know, uh, and we hoped that everything was going to work out fine. He got sick suddenly, you know, and then they did not know what was going on. Uh, he got better, uh, and uh, we were like, okay, we got hopeful again, and then he got uh, not so well. And we were talking about okay, we what if we find a stand in and stuff like that? You can, you, it, the spot is yours, Timmy. No matter what, and if you can only play one song, we will fix it up so that you can do that live because this is your spot, right. and we are going to play. I already agreed at that point. We're going to play from the mini LP, uh, Melissa, and don't break you off. That will be it when we start off again here uh, uh, with touring, you know. And uh, then we wanted to do something new in the same spirit of, of the old stuff and we write it in the same way that me and Hank used to do in the old days. And kind of typical Merciful Fate that we are not coming with a four-minute song, we are coming with a nine-minute song, you know. Uh, as the first one we come back with, uh, <clears throat> it will end up being uh, eight minutes and 54 seconds, I think it is. Uh, when the, there's an intro for the song that you have not heard live. Uh, and there's an outro as well. <clears throat> Uh, but the song that Hank presented to me was seven minutes and twenty four seconds, and then I usually sit with the scalpel and and do some some arrangement uh, things and this and that, and then he went back in and, and tried to do that stuff, and it was just like wow, this this is uh, so much of it, it, it works, and it ended up being almost nine minutes long, you know. Um, that's typical commercial fake, you know. But it, I think it's <laughs> it really works, and that song has all these dynamics that. The, the theme for the song is uh, witch trials in, in Austria in 1675. You know, it's, it, it's, it's real stuff. We actually ended up at that castle in outside of Salzburg where these horrible 
uh, which tries to place, you know, where they killed uh, uh, 139 people, I think it was, out of which uh, over 100 was kids, you know, between 10 and 14, absolutely horror. But it was a heavy feel uh, to be in that cast and being down in the dungeon, seeing where these killings took place, seeing the instruments that had killed so many people. Um, and the, the, there was a room next to it that was like the the justice room where there would have been uh, a bishop uh, dealing out justice, you know, uh, or injustice, you can call it. But then they, they, it was amazing to be there. We have some footage from there too, you know, that we could probably show at some point when we get done with this song. We have cut the drums here after we came back from the tour and their drums are completely like they're going to be. And uh, I need to uh, still uh, write the final piece, which I'm in the middle of right now, and uh, it'll be done when we start touring here. So, uh, the song will not come out till after the tour because we have not done everything yet. But uh, the drums are now complete and, and uh, perfect as they should be now. So uh, uh, progress is being made with that song all the time. It takes a little longer to record a song that is that long too because there's more, more twists and turns in it. You know? so, uh, and it'll be given to some of the, the big producers you know, to, to uh, have a shot at it. Uh, not just ourselves like we've done in the past, you know, but to, you really want to try and do everything absolutely perfect now. Uh, so uh, yeah it's going to be ex extremely exciting to, to see how the whole thing turns out but uh, it'll be the old uh, uh, motto from me you know all vocals are lead vocals uh, when, when I am involved you know and uh, that means that even choirs will be singing the main uh, lead parts and then uh, lyrics and stuff like that and you know, anything goes if I want a choir to come from left to right across the panel, then that's how it'll be, you know. I mean, it's whatever fits, whatever is, is feeling right is what we're going to do. There is no, yeah, but it's a backing vocal. I don't care what it is. It's a vocal and it needs to be heard and this, this and that, you know. So it, it's going to be done in the right way that, like we did in the old days. You know? So it's um, it is very exciting for us to, to work this way and uh, uh, now we can uh, take it uh, on the road as well. It, it was originally meant to be a King Diamond tour right now. Um, but King Diamond stuff is not ready to go on tour with right now because we must do a full album, you know, uh, yeah. must be finished. And we are writing now for King Diamond and Virtual Fate for both bands' full album, you know. Uh, but King Diamond will be out first. And we were supposed to have, have uh, had... Uh, uh, we know what the new production is going to be for King Diamond. It's going to be something totally different from anything you've seen before. I'm sure of it. Uh, I know our, our lighting engineer knows what it's all about, and he said this is going to be a challenge for me, man. This is I have never done this type of thing before. Uh, Andy knows it. I've talked uh, through with him if, if what kind of lighting the band can actually play in. Uh, there's going to be a lot of weird, different stuff going on there in, in the for the institute, you know, and that'll be the the part one uh, of of two that that will be the, the next album coming out. And that's... But we cannot, we cannot just do another tour based on a song or two working down when that's not fair for anyone, you know. So it has to wait till we are completely 100% ready to go that full circle and a new cycle can start with that, you know. Uh, so we had to say, that's not going to be happening now, what we thought. And then our booking agent said, hey, maybe you can do a, a short uh, commercial fake tour uh, without uh, jeopardizing any of the time we need for writing new stuff and it's like it, it makes sense uh, and that's what we're doing now well it, it makes total sense and i know everybody's really excited about new merciful fate material but also really excited about new king diamond material so to hear that you guys are working on both that's that's just amazing and and i have the new cover i have the new cover for merciful fate you know and i can't show it yet but i it, it's done oh man uh, for the new version, and it looks amazing and brian slagle have seen it you know and uh but it can't be shown at this point. And then when he saw it, it was like, oh, my God. It has nothing to do with, with trying to uh, simulate parts of, of uh, or incorporate uh, Melissa or Don't Break the Old Styles. It has nothing to do with that. It is just, but it is so miserable, fate, man. Right, right. So, um, yeah. Well, you know, seeing you in Vegas, talking to you for a little bit, I was blown away by the physical shape you're in. I mean, you, you're just so fit, and you just seem like you could have done nine shows a day. I know you had some uh, health issues some years back. So how does it feel to be on the other side of that? Well, you got to keep it up, you know. Yeah. I mean, you got to got to keep doing what the doctors tell you, you know. And that's what I do. I was just at the at my uh, I had checkups almost every three months with my cardiologist because it's it's his uh, 
choice that I want to see before we go out on the road every time, you know, just make sure everything and the AKG is where it should be and everything was perfect, you know, and uh, so just got to keep it up, you know. Yeah. My normal doctor checks all my blood work, uh, you know, at least once a year I have the normal uh, way and uh, all my cholesterol, everything is like, I can't get it any better than this. So I, I uh, try to eat right and do my stuff and I take long walks, you know, up and down the hills here where I live and uh, whether it's uh, 80 percent humidity or whatever that's I, I prefer that actually so i can really sweat and 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 it's good for stamina and stuff like that you know so because uh, yeah i have to run up and down the stairs you know and i did have a trip bypass you know back in 11 years ago yeah uh, uh it, it's uh i haven't, haven't felt better i think uh, in, in, as far as i can remember back you know so uh you've got to be making sure that, that you are up for you know so uh, I check my, my, my heart rate <laughs> during the show. Now, when I get a, a chance, I do a change. I get the wash out and I slam it, you know, and it, it finds the pulse and stuff like that while I'm doing things so I can see where I am with the whole thing, you know, and it's like, yeah, okay, we're good. Well, yeah, I mean, you couldn't be singing better. I mean, it, it just the it, it just sounded amazing. Um, the boys have really be, uh, benefited from uh, not smoking cigarettes, you know, uh, and also the fact that uh, when I had that uh, operation, they opened my, my chest completely sorted open and opened like a double door, you know, uh, and then put back together with uh, some very strong metal wires. Uh, there's three of them, rather thick ones, you know, uh, that, that sits in there now and holding the, the ribcage together. Of course, it's all grown around it now, but it's, uh, uh, yeah, it took a little while for it to, to, uh, to close completely, you know, and get all the nerves to find each other again, you know, uh, so... Uh, but everything's fine now, so it's uh, got some extra metal in my chest. That's good. Well, well, it's good to hear that everything's fine now, and, and I, you did undergo such an ordeal, but it's just so good to hear. You know, I, I read somewhere where you were talking about when you used to get off the stage, you'd be tired after the show. Now you're ready to you're ready to sing more after that. Could do it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the voice, you know, that, that is it, it's uh, tough stuff. You know, when I started rehearsing the uh, – the uh, the new set, you know, I uh, from the at the, the very beginning, uh, I started with the first song, the oath, you know, and it's uh, suddenly dawned on me how high it is, uh, and then I, whoa, uh, did I uh, <laughs> did I just shoot myself in the foot or something by saying, yeah, we're gonna play this and that? But then starting uh, to work with it, it was like suddenly it was just like uh, all all the memories of, of how much pressure here and there is being used. It, it just all fell into to place, you know, and, it, and it's it's a pleasure. You won't believe what kind of pleasure it is to sing it now. It's absolutely awesome. I love all the challenges in it, and the, it, it's just, uh, yeah, it, it, it's awesome to sing that and all the other old songs, you know. And, and you mentioned before also this, that there are people that have uh, some other favorites from other albums too, you know. And eventually, I'm sure we, we will, when the album comes out, you know, the let's say that first that's going to be the single that's coming out as soon as we're done here i'm pretty sure it's going to be out very short after and then there will be another song that we are working on right now that also drums have been cut for and it's a normal four minute uh, style song but it's it, well, we don't really do normal music but it it, uh, it has really old muscle fake feel uh, i know the title of it i haven't written the lyrics yet but i know what it's going to be about and uh we even have a, a cover for that too as a single cover. We have a single cover already uh, done for the Jagger of Sassburg, the one we're playing now live. Right. Uh, so things are quite organized and we are quite far with a lot of it, you know. So, uh, but then uh, for for when the full album comes out from Mr. Fate, it will be after King Diamond has done a cycle and a new album all the stuff. But it, it will be happening, you know. And uh, then there will be a full Mercial Vague cycle at that point, you know, and uh, we'll start touring that new album. Uh, and uh, what we're going to play there, we, we don't know right now. But I certainly have some, some songs that I also love a lot, you know. I can't wait to, to sing Burn in Hell. Again, I would love to sing that one. I remember how fun it was to sing it when I got the chance there in 1999 from the Nine album, you know. So yeah, it's, oh, uh, yeah. But there are lots of songs, lots of different songs that people uh, might want to hear play but we're never going to stop playing a bunch of the old ones because that's uh it's just so deep in us you know and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah i mean those first two albums are just unbeatable i mean you know you, you could play both those all the way through and and people would be you know <laughs> happy 
Um, we almost do, yeah. Well, you know, it's getting to be Halloween time um, here in the States and around the world. What what, what records do you put on to summon the spirit of the season? Oh, man, it's always Halloween where we are. It feels like it, you know, because dressing up every night, you know, when we're on tour, when we're on tour it turns uh, into Halloween every every night, you know. So uh, it's a little bit like the song Halloween. You can tell right. It's uh, every night is Halloween. So, uh, but, uh, well, I mean, you can always put Black Sabbath on, right? Then you're you are in Halloween mode uh, right away. Uh, and it's cool. It has some good stuff, too, of course. Uh, but there's lots of great stuff. Slayer, you can put a lot of stuff on, you know. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, uh, we, we play a lot of stuff uh, before we go on stage, too. You know, I think uh, they might still use the same old tape that I bring with me, which is all the old... Uh, Twisted uh, heavy metal, you know, uh, from the old days. Uh, I can never grow old of that, you know, so that can always get on here. Whether it's Bob or Blue Oyster Cult or whatever, you know, Deep Purple, Uri Heap, like I said, Black Sabbath, whatever, that's just so many great bands uh, from, from the, the early days, you know, and uh, listening to, to Black Sabbath, the first album, uh, yeah, it should still be able to give you the creeps. Oh, yeah, there's nothing like it, you know, and... You know, with this time of season, it really brings me into mind that, you know, you had a, a personal relationship, a friendship with Anton LaVey. What what does his work and his guidance and his wisdom mean to you as the years go on? Well, it was amazing to meet him, you know, and spend that full night at the church and, uh, and uh, in the ritual chamber and all this as well, you know, had, which had been uh, shut down there for over a year at that time. Uh just seeing the place, seeing all the, the the genuine old occult works and books that he had, you know, and uh, the way his uh, thirteen room house was set up, you know, uh, you could get into the ritual chamber through uh, an Iron Maiden uh, coffin, you can call it, right? Right. That was actually the door, you know. Uh, the the altar was built; it was very tall, uh, from old Roman stones, and I mean, it, there was so much stuff he explained to me. He played keyboards for me, you know, and. Uh, we just really hit it off. We were in the ritual chamber, and he, uh, I wanted to to uh, uh, not just stand and nod my head at everything he said. So I asked if I could speak first, you know, and I could uh, tell him what I felt about Satanism. And it was very special when, when uh, I think I talked for twenty minutes or so, and then, and then he uh, he took his bathroom table off his jacket and put it in my hands. I really pressed it in my hand. It was really it meant so much, you know. And he said something to me that I'm not going to say here. It's nobody's business, actually. But uh, right. that was very, very meaningful for me, you know. And uh, I, I have a letter with me always on tour that is handwritten by him to me, you know. And that is a lot of stuff that is very, very special. And uh, it's always with me on tour, you know. I always bring it. And uh, very, very special. He, his daughter Carla didn't believe I had that because he never had wrote anyone in hand, you know, he would always dictate use you to branch button, you know, and uh, but but I showed it to her one day and she was like, Wow, uh, there was a tear coming down uh, one cheek there. It was very it was a very moving moment, you know, it was very, very special. Then I tried to, to see her every time in San Francisco uh, if it's possible, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well it's it's he he was such an amazing guy and it's it's so cool to be able to talk to you about that meeting. Um well Thank you so much for talking to us today. Is there any final words you want to give your fans about the uh, upcoming fall tour? It's going to be very special, and uh, I guarantee it'll be something you will never forget, and in a good way. You will never forget it, man. It's it's very very special. There's so much mood in it, uh, right? Correct mood, you know. And uh, I know that the sound we we are bringing our sound guys and our crew is the best we've ever had, you know. So. Uh, Sound and lights is absolutely amazing. I don't think we've ever had it better. And uh, you, you have something to look forward to. Uh, I guarantee it. I'm so confident about what we're bringing now, and it's uh, amazing. This, this is the way Muscle Fate should always have looked and sounded. Well, we are so excited to experience it, man. <clears throat> King Diamond, thank you so much for coming on on the Ratio Podcast. And uh, when you come, when you get the uh, the King Diamond solo record, you should come back on, and we'll talk about that. Absolutely, man, and thanks for having me. Thank you. I want to thank King Diamond for coming on the Ratio Podcast and talking about this exciting 
Merciful Fate Tour that you should run out right now and get your tickets to. The, uh, the Atlanta stop again is at the Tabernacle on November 16th. So come see Merciful Fate Creator in Midnight. It's just going to be an awesome, awesome night of metal. And I want to thank Jenny, who works with King Diamond, for setting this interview up. Um, I remember meeting King out in Vegas, and pretty much we missed a flight to set this interview up, and it was well, well worth it. So uh, thanks so much for all your support, and uh, stay switched on, and we'll talk to you soon.